Hi, I'm Tomislav uh, Galjanic, and uh, welcome to the uh, lecture on supplemental Python material for uh, supervised machine learning. Uh, in this lesson, we will be uh, going over the Python code uh, that uh, covers the examples uh, in, in our lectures. Uh, we uh, covered, as you recall, uh, several uh, examples uh, for uh, fitting uh, decision trees, calculating entropy, and, uh, and uh, random forests. So let's get started. Uh, first of all, uh, make sure you have the necessary libraries installed. They include pandas, numpy, matplotlib, and scikit-learn. If you don't have them, then uh, please run this uh, first uh, line of the code. Okay, assuming you have the uh, libraries imported, uh, let's look at the first example, which is the example of, um, of uh, building a model to determine how to uh, optimally classify whether a pet would be purchased or not based on uh, four different features uh, describing that pet. So the first thing we need to do is to import uh, the tree uh, classifier uh, method from scikit-learn. Uh, similarly, uh, we need to import NumPy, and then uh, we go through the definition of the, uh, the feature matrix uh, and the uh, the class output vector y. Okay, so um, in terms of the uh, building the model, uh, what we do is uh, we first have to create an instance of the decision tree classifier. We do that by calling tree dot decision tree classifier, and the only parameter we specify here is that we want to use entropy as the uh, as the uh, metric for information gain. Okay. So uh, as we've done that, we can fit the model. We provide the, uh, the feature matrix X and the class vector Y. Uh, we fit the model, and then we can take a look at the tree that the model produced by using tree.plot underscore tree. So uh, the model output is basically the same as we saw in class. Uh, we see all the split points. We see uh, all the um, all the observations that are at the bottom of uh, the leaf nodes at each one of the trees, uh, and um, and and basically, like I said, it's the same thing we have seen in class. So let's move on then to the uh, the entropy uh, example. Uh, here we were actually uh, looking at uh, an example with uh, with uh, eight observations. We had uh, eight students. Uh, and we had information on their majors. That was our, our, our feature vector. And then we also had information on whether they liked stats or not, which was false or true. And uh, we can think of that as our sort of a class uh, label output. Okay, so we import pandas and then create a data frame, which stores all of the information uh, representative in our example. And we get this uh, table, which basically shows all of the uh, observations, uh, students, their, 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 their major, as well as whether they like stats or not. So uh, the first thing that we do is we actually look at the, the entropy calculation. Uh, we look at uh, both entropy in uh, what we consider a uh, variable major and then variable like stats. Uh, we create a helper function here first that will determine the probability of belonging to a particular class, whether it's a major or, you know, like stats, true or false. And then we use that helper function to, uh, to actually estimate the probabilities. And then we actually do calculation of entropy by hand as per first part of the problem. So this is basically a negative sum of the product of probabilities uh, uh, with log base two probabilities uh, for all of the uh, possible variable uh, uh, level uh, values. And so, uh, you know, in case of our uh, major, if you look at major as a variable and we see that we have eight observations, four of which uh, have students uh, as majoring in math, two in e English and two in stats, that will, you know, give us the information that we see here that 25% of the observations are English students, 25% stats and 50% math, okay. And uh, based on that information, as we feed uh, this to our formula that calculates entropy by major, we see that we can get a calculation of entropy equals 1.5. Now this same thing basically can be done um, uh, or at the entropy calculation can be done using the uh, scipy uh, stats function called entropy. And so we uh, give you an example of that as well. 
So first you import entropy from SciPy stats, and then you can use it in a formula, which basically uh, you know, calculates uh, the entropy for each uh, variable. Here we actually calculate entropy both for uh, entropy on major as well as entropy on uh, like stats. And we see that the entropy is 1.5, just like in the first uh, by hand method for major. And then we see that entropy for like stats is one. Okay, so next uh, we we go quickly over the uh, uh, the conditional entropy. As you as you recall, uh, we needed to calculate the conditional entropy of of each uh, of each um, subtree that we um, that we had after we split our initial data set by major. So once we have data set splits by major, we want to calculate what is the entropy for each subset and then uh, to evaluate what is the total entropy across all of the subsets so we can compare it to the, to the total entropy prior to the split, okay? So this, this procedure is, uh, is very similar as the one above. We're basically calculating the uh, entropy uh, or, or probabilities uh, by, uh, of, of liking stats by, uh, by major. Uh, and then uh, we actually uh, calculate the entropy uh, given those probabilities. Uh, what we uh, basically do is we weigh each one of the uh, entropies of, of, of along each of the branch uh, with the weight uh, which corresponds to the number of or, or proportion of observations that ended up in that, uh, in that branch. So basically we see that we have 25% uh, uh, of observations will be our, uh, be our English students. And then the entropy there is going to be calculated based on 100% of students not liking stats. Um, whereas for the uh, stats majors, we'll have the opposite. We'll have 100% students liking the stats. And, and again, this represents 25% of the observations. Finally, our math majors are uh, highest uh, in proportion, 50%. However, they're also split in the uh, a liking of stats 50-50. Uh, so calculating that gives us a uh, total entropy of 0 0.5. And as we discussed in class, uh, we see that's an improvement to the initial entropy on liking stats without splitting on major, which was uh, one. Okay. And finally, just uh, we have one example with decision trees with real data. Here we're actually utilizing a data set from Sidekit to learn on uh, wines. Uh, in particular, we have uh, 178 uh, rows, 178 observations uh, with 13 columns or 13 uh, feature, uh, feature um, um, uh, variables. And uh, so, um, you know, in this particular case, uh, you know, the, the, the underlying story is that we have, uh, you know, 178 different uh, wines, which are actually produced by three different wine growers. Uh, our, our, uh, our, our features are, are described here. And then we, on top of that, we also have our uh, target class uh, variable, which is uh, defined as the target in the data set. And basically we see there are actually three uh, different uh, classes. So three different wine growers, uh, zero, one, and two uh, labels. And so our task is going to be to try to build a model that uh, based on the uh, you know the, the specification of some uh, some attributes of each particular wine. Um, the model tries to predict actually which wine grower uh, actually produced this this wine. So we do that uh, in re in real life uh, by uh, you know first of all dividing our data set into the training and testing um, uh, uh, portion. So what we want to do is we want to. Uh, build a model on a training data set and then test it on the test data set. And for that, we actually uh, can utilize uh, a, a very, very uh, useful function from scikit-learn uh, called uh, train test split, uh, part of the model selection um, uh, library. Uh, as well, uh, we will calculate some, uh, we will, or we want to calculate some uh, metrics to see how precise our model is after we fit it. Uh, so we use also this, uh, this tool set uh, metrics from scikit-learn. Okay, so the first part is to divide our data set into training and testing. We do that by calling train test split uh, after providing the data and setting the percentage for the test size. 
what we get basically are uh, four, four, uh, four data sets. We have training and testing feature uh, matrix set and then training and testing uh, class uh, uh, value set. Okay, once we have that, we can build a model. As previously, we, uh, we create a decision tree classifier, we fit it, and then we actually do the prediction. Prediction is done using our test feature set. Again, test not training because we do want to see how our model performs outside of the training data set. Uh, and then what we also want to do is we want to calculate the accuracy by comparing the prediction from our model to the uh, to the y uh, the the actual uh, true data uh, value or the class of the variable. And so uh, what we do the way we do that is we basically you know compare the predicted class with the true class and if they agree then that's a positive point you know uh, and 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 it's one and if it's uh, the classes disagree, then that's zero. So we will basically look at the proportion of those observations which are classified properly. Yeah. So in this particular case, this turns out to be 100%. So looks like our training and testing data sets were very similar. Uh, the tree itself, uh, decision tree that we built as part of the model can be seen by using the tree.plot uh, as previously. And you can basically see all of the decision splits that were uh, they were made and uh, you know what are the uh, uh, what is the whole process of actually building the tree. Finally, uh, we, we, we take this same example and we run a random forest. This is again just to kind of give you guys an idea of how to use this in practice. Um, similarly to decision trees, you need to import a random forest classifier from scikit-learn the uh, particular uh, subset of, uh, of, of tools uh, is uh, called Ensemble. So scikit-learn.ensemble will contain random forest classifier. And uh, you know, similarly to building the decision trees, we first instantiate this classifier by providing some parameters such as here we say we will have 20 trees and at maximum they will have uh, two, there'll be two levels deep. Uh, we next fit using the training uh, feature matrix and training um, uh, Y uh, class set. And then we create a prediction utilizing the testing data set again, rather than training. So uh, after we've done that, we can again utilize our uh, scikit-learn metrics uh, accuracy score to actually compare the predictions with the, the true values uh, for the uh, test subset. And uh, we print it out and we get uh, here a particularly accuracy of 98.1%. Okay, so I hope you, uh, you enjoyed this uh, lesson on uh, supervised machine learning uh, and uh, you know, good luck in your study of data science.